What does it take to be a punk rock icon? Does Jello deserve the title? Jello Biafra, known by the legal name Eric Reed Bouchard, is a 64 year old political activist and performer. He is best known for his role as the vocalist of the SoCal punk band Dead Kennedys and for his absurd lyrics that are incredibly unique to himself. Eric was raised in a household by parents who cared to inform him of the world outside his home. He's quoted as saying that he watched both cartoons and news with fascination. He recalls violent footage of things such as the Vietnam War or Watergate trials being on news circuits before the news became so corporately funded and censored. Jello has been a longtime activist for many topics, especially that including free speech and freedom of press. With decades of public speaking under his belt, dramatic and shocking performances, and even running for political office in San Francisco, the question now is, do Jello's actions reflect that of which we could call those a punk rock icon? And what has he done to, exactly to deserve that title? The San Francisco punk scene was a tender and budding community, still unstable and untouched by record labels and exploitation. When a young Eric discovers rock music for the first time, the scene undoubtedly will become changed forever. With fiery and sarcastic lyrics, a young Jello finds other outspoken young men to establish a punk rock group titled Dead Kennedys. The title comes from Jello's beliefs that the death of John F. Kennedy reigned in an era of apathy for the American people, which only became supported by the following scandals of the Vietnam War and conservative Christian politics enforcing their lifestyle beliefs through legal means. During this time, the band was playing many live shows, switching up lyrics and getting personal with fans in an attempt to always be creating something better or new. Their first album dropped in 1980 and to this day is renowned as one of the most impactful and greatest punk records. Fresh Fruit, Ro Fresh Fruit for Rotting Vegetables was a strong enough title, but whiny guitars and his iconic lisp make it an undeniably a masterpiece of its own. Lyrics such as, This world brings me down, gag with every breath, this world brings me down, I'm looking forward to death. And I kill children, I love to see them die, I kill children and make their mamas cry, crush them under my car, I want to hear them scream, feed them poison candy, spoil their Halloween. These sound like something off a death, death metal or hardcore album, but these conceptual songs show the reality of sick minds that we sometimes find ourselves being empathetic to. Towards. In the summer of 1979, Jello ran for mayor of San Francisco, one of his appointments being Diane Feinstein, who is a conservative political leader to this day in California. His platform was run completely DIY, with these stated as his political positions. Businessmen to wear clown suits within city limits, holding elections in which police would be voted into office by the neighborhoods they patrolled, appointing a board of bribery that would set fair bribery prices, tearing down Pier 39, legalizing squatting in vacant buildings, uh, paying the unemployed to panhandle in wealthy neighborhoods, including his running opponent Feinstein's neighborhood, banning cars citywide, and erecting a statue of Dan White, and having the Parks Department sell eggs, tomatoes, and rocks to pelt it with. Um, if I'm remembering correctly off the top of my head, I believe Dan White attempted murder or killed a fudge. Uh, and, uh, Harvey Milk, right? That's who that is? I don't know. I'm sorry. He came in fourth place with 3.6% of the final vote. I know it's, like, more like 3.79 or something. Like, I could have rounded up, like, 3.8, but, like, I wrote 3.6, okay? Shortly after the release of their 1985 Frankenstein- Franking Christ album, Jello found himself in the public eye once again, this time being prosecuted for distribution of inappropriate images to a minor. This was not a situation like you'd find with our modern rock stars and young teens, but in fact a concerned mother took it upon herself to make charges against Jello and his label, Alternative Tentacles, for the inclusion of a poster in a record CD pamphlet. That doesn't make sense, but it's okay. The artwork on trial was H.R. Geiger's Landscape XX, a grayscale and semi-symmetric pattern of penises entering other genital orifices. During this trial, even the prosecuting, attorney, prosecuting attorneys realized halfway through that they were on the opposite side of what was right. Ultimately, the judge filed the case as a mistrial, and the jury was hung up 5-9 to nine acquittal. After the success of this trial, Jello went on Oprah to discuss with Al Gore's wife, Tipper Gore, the right to free speech, expression, and art. Speaking of alternative tentacles, it was and remains to this day Jello's core structure of producing music for himself and others. The label attempts to be semi genreless and only ever includes distinct and unique bands. It is the label which did Kennedy's first release, the single California Uberalis, in uh, 1979. On in 1979 or something. 
Jill eventually messed up pretty heavily with his past band members, though to this day he seems to not perceive what happens as poor judgment. In 1998, there became legal issues between band members, um, between members of the band, including East Bay Ray, Claus Floyd, and D.H. Peligro. Uh, rest in peace, even though he did say that one weird thing that one time. Um, <laughs> the trio claimed Jello had been unfairly withholding rights and royalties from other members of the band. Ultimately, the court ruled in favor of the three, and Jello's poor choices lost him much support from fans. Jello was indeed being uncooperative with his bandmates, and for lack of a better term, this was a dick move. Since 1998, Jello has put out an incredibly large catalog with multiple groups such as Mojo Nixon, DOA, The Melvins, and many more artists. This catalog includes at least 10 full spoken word political ramblings, poetry, and recordings. Jello continues his political conversations with shocking but necessary questioning online through his podcast, Renegades of the Round Table, and semi regular episodes of his self expressive series, What Would Jello Do? on YouTube. Though it's not very frequent, he does still play and produce music with his contemporary band, Jello Biafra and the Guantanamo School of Medicine. Fun fact. Um, their most recent album, uh, Tea Party Revenge Porn, came out on my birthday in 2020, so happy birthday to me. Okay. I will attempt to emulate his look and mannerisms in a drag performance spent lip-singing, two-stepping, and interacting with props. I plan to imitate his physical appearance and make with makeup and shapewear. My simplistic and artistic approach can begin with the per very performance method I have chosen for the project. As legislation passes all around this country to restrict the abilities for people to present with a fluid sense of identity, be it transitioning as a trans person or simply presenting in a certain way for the sake of drag, I choose to make a flamboyant display of performance similar to how Jello and generations of punks inspired by him have. The ability to incorporate facets of resistance in our education, such as educating against oppression through the art they wish to censor, isn't something I am willing to give up. I'm being told but no by someone who wants to limit me unfairly, and I will not allow for the subduing of myself or others. From a less politically conscious summary, point, my costuming is all based off of some of the more recognizable images of Jello in published media. These include the suit and tie in his mayoral campaign photos, and the dollar sign spray painted on a white button up in early band photos. Jello had also been photographed wearing a white t-shirt with black text spelling out, Nobody Knows I'm a Lesbian a teen slogan popularized in the 80s during the AIDS crisis, and Jello being an ally to the LGBT of the time. And yes, still now, but like, of the time, you know? In my recreation of the shirt, I used markers, aerosol paint, and acrylic paint to DIY the letters in true punk fashion, as well as trimming off the standard collar and cuff for a messier punk appearance. For the audio I will lip sync to, I actually mixed it myself. It is a track compiled of some notorious and fave Dead Kennedy songs, as well as clips from Jello's spoken word albums. Spoken word clips mostly come from the album Machine Gun in the Clown's Hands, and specifically the track 12 Steps to a Corporate Free Sobriety. Some of the songs included in the Dead Kennedys band some of the songs included from the Dead Kennedys band are California Uber Alice, Nazi Punks Fuck Off, and MTV Get Off the Air. I wish that I had taken more time to make this project the best that it could be. I wish that I had the ability to listen to more of his works, but there's just so many and it's difficult to listen to it all, um, especially because it's not just listening, um, it's also comprehending it and collecting said information and then expressing it creatively. Um, it's a tall order. Uh, I wish I didn't feel so rushed in this project, but that was my procrastination in the way of success, uh, at least success to the degree in which I desire it. Um, I am grateful to have stuck with it for so long because this project has really sparked something dedicated inside of me, and I look forward to the reaction from my peers as well as their critiques and perception. By taking on his local government and encouraging voting in local elections to this day, and by standing up in the courtroom to speak on behalf of the rights of artists to express, and with his unwavering character voice, the evidence suggests that decades of political involvement would qualify Jello to be a historical punk rock 